first of all, not a good idea to say that because I was on my period and I took that in a very offensive way. Not a good choice of words. I was like, what are you talking about what's wrong with me? You're so rude. Like, why would you say that? And he's like, no, I mean, like, why haven't you been talking to me? I'm confused. We were all good until Melanie got here. And then you just started acting super weird with me. And then he's also like, I've been trying to call and text you. Which, yes, I forgot to mention that to you guys. Mainly because I didn't want it to look like it was my fault. Okay? That communication got cut off between both of us. Again, another coping mechanism safety safety nobody likes to have their fucking feelings hurt so i'm like well i figured things would just get weird and he's like what are you talking about things would get weird and i ended up just telling him that melanie liked him which was really fucking annoying because i would rather be confessing my feelings for him instead of my best friend's feelings that she had for him and yes i still had a lot of feelings for him but melanie beat me to the punch she did and you know what i know if i would have told her that i liked him first she would have done the exact same for me so after that conversation things were pretty much done between alex and i right after that the only time that we would talk was if it was about work or if melanie was also a part of the conversation that involved both of us and eventually Alex did end up asking her out. He asked her if she wanted to go to the movies and then he got her a teddy bear from the gas station. He took me bowling. I just want to put that out there. Okay, I know I'm being bitter. I know I'm being bitter, but I'm in my feels right now. That's why. So let me grieve in peace. So fast forward, Melanie is literally talking my freaking ear off every single day or every single time that she has a chance to talk to me about how much her and Alex are getting along and how sweet he is and how he took her virginity in the back of his car the first night that they went on that date. And then he went home three days later. Literally after that, all Melanie did was eat, sleep, and breathe FaceTime with Alex. It was sad. She would talk to him while she was working. She would literally have one AirPod in and she would be talking to customers being like, oh yeah, like, do you want sauce with that? While on the phone with him. And eventually our manager told her she had to stop being on her phone so much. So what did she do? She fucking quit. Just so she could be on FaceTime with Alex. Also, Alex lived, hmm, I don't know, 12 hours away. And not to mention, you know, I was put on the back burner, you know. Well, come winter time, her and Alex are having issues. So now she wants to talk to me. Obviously, I wasn't going to shut her out, okay? Because she was still my best friend. I didn't replace her or anything, even though I should have. Because... At this point, I'm feeling used. So she was telling me about how they would make plans to FaceTime and then he wouldn't FaceTime her and some days he just wouldn't text her at all. But she would go on Snapchat and check his location. You know how you can see like um, on people's location, if, they're, if they have their locations on on Snapchat, this person was on Snapchat like two minutes ago. Yeah, that's what she would look for. And whenever he turned his location off, she would check his Snap score. Yes his snap score she was one of those girls but honestly nothing wrong with one of the being one of those girls like nothing wrong with that all i'm saying is just that she was becoming very 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 obsessed because it's only january sis y'all been together for five months not only that she has all the passwords to all of his social medias she forced him to download life 360 so that way she could have his location all the time like we were literally only 16 years old and she's already in a toxic ass relationship and not to mention controlling controlling and he did not do any of that controlling ass shit to her he didn't have her social media passwords. He didn't care who she hung out with. If she said she couldn't talk, he was completely fine with that. So we could definitely say that Melanie was the toxic aggressor slash controlling one in the relationship, which kind of made sense because she low key was a little bit controlling in our friendship as well. So I could definitely see that whenever, you know, started to catch on to their relationship. And he had never cheated on her or anything like that also. Just want to put that out there. You know, she wasn't crazy because he cheated on her or anything. She just had a lot of insecurities that she pushed onto him. But back to the, you know, controlling part, you know, I'll give you an example of like, you know, our friendship and how she was controlling. The one night we were going to go on a double date with these two guys, okay? 
and I walk out to her car and I'm wearing a red tank top with a pair of jeans and she's like you can't wear that I was gonna wear that I was gonna wear something like that you have to take it off so I'm like what the what am I? what so you know I go back upstairs I change I come back down and she's like wait i think i want to wear something like that can you change back into the other thing and i'm like nope and then she literally had to fit the whole night and she said that she didn't want to go so we didn't go well eventually melanie comes over to my house the one night right and she's crying freaking out saying that her and alex broke up he broke up with her he pretty much told her that he couldn't handle her anymore he was done with having to worry about her getting upset with him because he didn't answer one of her text messages fast enough or stay on the phone with her while he would be in school all the way to when he would have dinner with his family which you guys know that you know football season starts earlier in the year well i guess that literally like a month or two or whenever football season started which wasn't that long after they got together, she would literally tell him, you have to FaceTime me while you're at football pla practice. And he would be like, but I can't do that. I can't run around with the fucking phone in my hand. She's like, well, then put me on the bench and flip the phone over so that way nobody sees. Because she was worried about him talking to cheerleaders. I'm pretty sure the cheerleaders aren't even at guys' football practice. I mean, I don't know how that works, but still. So then she's like, do you think that you could talk to him for me? Like, I'm so upset right now. And I told her that I wasn't going to talk to him about it. I wasn't going to get involved. And to be honest, I read the big paragraphs that he sent her. He really did not want anything to do with her. So, you know, Melanie is super upset for the next few months. Um, April rolls around and she has a new boyfriend who we're going to call Lucas okay it was a super odd couple to be honest because he was nothing like alex alex was super tall muscular tall dark and handsome i think that's that would be the words and lucas was short skinny and yeah and there's nothing wrong with that there's really nothing wrong with that i'm just saying i wasn't expecting her to go for him okay so fast forward to the summer before our senior year. Lucas and Melanie are still dating, obviously. Actually, they have a really healthy relationship compared to Melanie and Alex's relationship. I mean, it's probably because it's not long distance, but I'll give Melanie props. She has definitely matured in the relationship slash trust department, but I'm still working at the movie theaters. And last summer, the boys did not come back to the movie theater. I don't even know if they came back to visit, but yeah. So I wasn't expecting them to come back this year, which I wasn't really focused on boys at this time, okay? I was focused on school and making my money, period. Well, it comes that time whenever school gets out and everybody is trying to get a job at the movie theaters. So my manager starts hiring people and a few days later, I walk into work and I hear a really familiar voice coming from the men's bathroom so i go around the counter i put my apron on and and i'm like watching the men's like bathroom door like a freaking hawk waiting for whoever it is to come out of that bathroom because i remembered the boys but i just couldn't put a face to the voice that i was hearing well then all of a sudden alex and brandon walk out of the bathroom by the way i don't know if i mentioned this earlier but alex and brandon are both brothers just wanted to put that out there but things were super 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 awkward because alex and i hadn't talked since him and Melanie got together, which I think was like maybe a year and a half ago by now. I think that, I don't know. I'm too lazy to figure out the timeline. But he comes around to our station and we were put together to work on the popcorn and icy machine because my manager was like, things are too messy around here. We need more organization. That's what'll make us all work harder and better. I'm like, you're gonna do whatever. He goes on these tangents 24 7. Anyway, so like I said, things are super awkward. But you know what? Once again, Alex being his funny, charismatic self, he knew how to break the ice. And also, can I just mention that he? I thought he was hot before. No. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, he got way, way better looking than the last time, to be honest. Now I could consider his old self a three and his new self like an 11. I don't even know how that's possible in, within a year and a half. And eventually things are back to how they were before. I mean, he did tell me his side of the breakup though, like everything that Melanie didn't tell me. But I will say that Melanie told me most of the truth, you know, instead of trying to make herself look 
better in the situation but he did say that he didn't really have feelings for her anymore like for how much she liked him versus how much he liked her it just wasn't mutual so eventually i asked him hey like does melanie know you're back in town and then he told me that he had to block her on everything because she wouldn't stop blowing up his phone she literally would call him off of random numbers so he had to get his phone number changed um she wouldn't stop logging in and out of his snapchat and instagram because she still had the passwords and everything and her email was hooked up to the shit so he had to delete his instagram and snapchat so i guess the short answer would be no she does not know that alex is in town but now i feel super weird okay because on one hand i don't want to tell melanie that alex is here i want to keep alex all to myself and that's what i want but on the other hand i also feel obligated to tell her because her ex-boyfriend and i are now working together devil angel Look out of here so i do end up calling melanie that night and i tell her that he's working back at the movie theaters and the line literally goes silent for two minutes all i can hear is her breathing like it sounded like she was hyperventilating slash going to pass out so two minutes later i'm like mel are you okay and she's like yeah i'm fine i'm gonna call you in the morning click that's all nothing else so fast forward the next day at work melanie never called me not once and as soon as i walk into work i see melanie talking to my manager and he's like melanie's invited back here but i want you to keep a very strict eye on her because i want to make sure that no weird shit's going on and he pretty much meant like her and alex like doing the nasty anywhere or being gross together because he knew all the tea about them being together and then them being broken up you know because like we tell him everything, duh. But now I'm super nervous because I don't know if Alex is going to strangle me or quit and go home. And I'm actually super pissed off. Like this girl has literally been fired three times or she quit. I don't, I don't know. She's been back and forth so many times and yet we're going to give her another chance to work here. What the fuck? So as soon as my manager walks away, I pretty much go over to Melanie and I'm like, why are you back here? I thought you don't want to work here anymore. And she goes, wow, I thought you'd be way happier like that I'm back here to work with you. So I cool down and I'm like, no, no, like I'm happy to see you. It's just like, why? Like, you know, I thought you hated it here. Are you back here, sis? Like why the sudden change of heart? She was like, well, I wish I could say that I came back for you, but I actually came back so that way I could talk to Alex. Like I wanted to get some closure. I just need closure between Alex and I because I never got that. Did you know that he blocked me right after he broke up with me over text? Like he couldn't even wait until he came again in the summer to break up with me? How rude. So I'm like, yeah, I completely understand. Completely, 100%. And then Alex walks in to work and he sees me and Melanie talking. And I think he already realized what was going on once he saw Melanie putting on an apron. So he goes and he lifts up his phone and looks at me and he's like, look at your text messages. And Melanie saw it and she was low-key weirded out. Like, she looked at me and she was like, <laughs> oh, okay. And then he texted me, he was like, why the fuck is Melanie here? And I'm like, well, I, she found out you were in town. That's why she found out you were here. I was like, she'll most likely quit in a week. She just said that she needs some closure from your guys' relationship. And he's like, I don't know what closure she needs because literally back in October, the first time that I tried to break up with her, she threatened to off herself. And the second time I tried to break up with her, she threatened to off herself again, but she told me, this time my blood will be on your hands because i'm not telling anybody else so now i'm really starting to understand why he did not want her to know that he was back in town so now i feel like you know the bad person here so before our manager leaves um the new groups were assigned right and it was alex and melanie assigned to the front and it was brandon and i assigned to the ticket booth and melanie was all excited you know she's like <laughs> until alex runs up to the manager and he's like um yeah i'm not fucking working with her crazy ass i don't feel comfortable around her so he's like can you please put me with someone else and you know our manager starts looking with me and him back and forth he's like and he's like all right brandon and melanie um you two work the front and 
you and Alex work at the ticket booth. So now Melanie's being super weird, okay? Because like in the movie theater, right? I don't even know how to really like do this. Okay, so here is the um the snack thing, you know, like where they work, you know, the counter. And then there's a wall right here, okay? And around that wall, you walk around that wall to get to the ticket booth, you know, where we check the tickets and stuff. So she kept going to the ladies restroom so that way she could keep walking around us and keeping an eye on us and every time that she passed us she would literally give me the side eye like like that so at that point i just said screw it i'm gonna have a good time no matter what i don't care we were having such a good time we were laughing smiling you know joking around I want to just date him already. So anyways, so that night the boys drive home and it's only Melanie and I cleaning up and she comes over to me and she's like, why didn't you answer my text message? And I'm like, because I was working. And she goes, oh, well, I didn't know that work was so important to you. Also, you know how I feel about Alex. So I don't know why you would even talk to him. So I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't know that it was such a big deal to you because you're with Lucas now. And she was like, well, it doesn't matter because I am with Lucas, but I'm just saying, like, he's weird. Why would you talk to him? Ew. So after that, fast forward a few days, Alex and I are working at the same station again. And Melanie and him did end up having a talk. He ended up had an hour talk with her, you know, giving her closure. Pretty much just talking about why the relationship ended, you know? So after that, they decide that they can be friends again, which is awesome. Good. I'm happy about that because I'm tired of this. But... Melanie starts to notice that Alex and I aren't just friends. We just don't feel friendly towards each other. Because the one night she texted me, she was like, I know you like Alex. And I'm like, what are, what are you talking about? Like, what the fuck? And she's like, I know you're lying, but like, you can date him if you want. Like, I'm, I'm okay with it. I don't care. So I really feel weird. I feel like this is a trap. This is 110% a trap. So I feel like I shouldn't date him because this might be a trap. And Alex did ask me to go on a date, but I didn't tell Melanie about it, even though she said that we can date because I just was not going to get into it with her because I had a feeling like I said that that was a fucking trap. So Alex takes me to the same bowling alley that we went to the first time, you know, it was kind of like our special place, you know. And while we were there, he asked me to be his girlfriend. Yes, he asked me to be his girlfriend. So I like kind of hesitated about it because of Melanie. I was like, yeah, no, I'm not sure if that's such a good idea. Like, I don't want to hurt Melanie's feelings. She wouldn't do this to me. And he was like, well, I already asked Melanie, so there should be no problem. She said that she supported us being in a relationship. So on that note, I said yes, because I have literally had a crush on this kid since I first saw him working at the movie theaters, okay? And last summer, I was super upset whenever they did not come back you know for the summer he was pretty much the only thing that i could look forward to that whole year of course after my best friend and him broke up <laughs> and i know that sounds super pathetic you know that he's like the only guy that i could think about it but let me put this out there for you it's just something about the boys that don't go to your school that makes them superior to the boys that actually go to your school okay makes sense it does so the next day i get to work and i run up to melanie and i'm like i said yes and she's like what are you talking about and I'm like, I said yes to Alex. You know, he asked me out. And she's like, oh my God, I can't believe you went on a fucking date with him. And then you have the nerve to just walk up to me and tell me that you two are in a relationship. And I was like, well, Alex told me that you said it was okay. And she's like, Alex never asked me shit. And then she picks up all of her stuff and walks out for the day. She's done for the day. So now I'm super upset with Alex and I confront him about it. And he goes, I just don't want to waste time being friends with you for the rest of the summer, all because you're too worried about Melanie's feelings. So I 100% agree with him at this point. I'm like, all right, you're right. I'll let you have this one, you're right. But then in the morning when I woke up, I get a text from Melanie apologizing to me, apologizing, yes. She says that she's sorry for overreacting and it just hit her hard because Alex was the guy that she lost her virginity to. And then two days later, she breaks up with Lucas. So I was kind of weirded out by that. And when I asked her why, she was like, well, I just don't have feelings for him anymore, to be honest, you know? And I'm like, no, I don't. It was sus. It really was. And she was like, to be honest, he was more like a rebound. Since that rebound lasted a year and a half, almost two years. That was not a fucking rebound. 
anyway so you know she seems super supportive and everything so it's a little bit easier for me to tell her about you know alex and i obviously i don't overshare anything and obviously i don't talk about him 24 7 well the one night alex is supposed to come and pick me up right and uh we're supposed to go on a date we're supposed to go to a museum and then we're supposed to go out to eat with his parents so melanie's over my house before i leave you know and i go on this date and i walk out of the bathroom and the outfit that i had picked and she's like oh my god you cannot wear that and i'm like why and she goes, well, he doesn't like those types of dresses. Also, you're wearing way too much makeup. He likes more of natural girls. And the heels, that's whenever I cut this bitch off, okay? Mm, fuck no. I'm like, okay, I get that you dated him, but can I just figure out what he likes on my own? And she goes, I mean, I'm just saying, like, unless you want to end up dumped like me, you should probably listen to what I have to say. I mean, I know what he likes. He dated me first. Thanks, Captain Obvious. So, you know, she left and I was feeling super insecure, you know, but I went out with everything that I had on, didn't change one thing, and Alex complimented me the whole night. So, ha. So fast forward, um, Melanie somehow got these shifts switched around, you know, and I was working at the ticket booth by myself while it was her, Brandon, and Alex all up at the front working at the counter. And anytime that I would have to go to the front, she would literally be like, you know, ha ha ha, Alex, oh my God, you're so funny, you know? And she'd, she would like hold his wrist while she's talking to him. She'd be like, oh my God, listen to this. So I get out of work earlier than everybody else and Melanie needs a ride home the one night. So she asks Alex if he can take her home. And of course, my lovely boyfriend says yes. And as soon as they get to her house, she has no hesitation being like, I wanna get back together with you. Like throwing herself a pity party. Alex, I love you. Please give me a second chance. I was young and I was dumb and I didn't know what I was doing. I'm so sorry I hurt you. Blah, blah, blah. And he tells her, I don't want to be with you. I don't like you. But instead of just taking the L, she literally climbs on top of him while he's in the driver's seat and starts making out with him. Trying to make out with him at least. You know, he's like, get the fuck off of me, bitch. And Alex's dad was an Uber driver and he had one of those um, dash cams, you know, looking outside of the car, but also one that recorded the inside of the car. So this was all on tape. And then Melanie tried texting me right after and she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Alex literally just tried to hook up with me and just tried to say that, you know, he wanted us to get back together. And the only reason why he's been dating you is to make me jealous. I tried to tell you that he's a bad person and you just didn't listen to me, but it's okay. I just think you need to break up with him. I mean, unless you're okay with him trying to make out with, you know, your best friend. So after that, I call Alex and Alex is telling me the complete opposite of what she said, you know, that it was her saying all this stuff and that it was her who made out with him, blah, blah, blah. So I blocked him fucking both because I just like, I didn't care. I really did not care at this point, okay? Like you two have whatever fucked up relationship you got going on, keep that shit over there. So eventually I was fine and dandy with working the ticket booth alone. I did not give one and Alex would try to talk to me. And then Melanie, whenever she would see that Alex tried to talk to me, she would talk, try to talk to me, you know? But I guess around um, Christmas time, Alex's dad had been looking through the um, dash cam footage. And I guess he found that little excursion that happened with Melanie and Alex. And also Alex is not in high school at this time. He's in college and he comes to my house. During Christmas break, he literally comes to my house knocks on the door and he's like i have something to show you like can i talk to you so he shows me the video of what happened which you know what bravo alex like the fact that he literally still was like low-key fighting for me over those few months and didn't just see the video and be like well that's a loss whatever it is what it is no he came to my house so then, you know, Alex and I are back together. Uh, and then I send the video to Melanie and I'm like, what the fuck is this? I was like, I thought that he was the one who tried to get with you. She was like, dude, you're such a freaking weirdo. She was like, why do you have a video of me making out with your boyfriend on your phone? She was like, this is definitely CP and I'm reporting you. Okay, sis, whatever you say. So then I just didn't answer that message, right? And then she goes, if you don't delete that video, I'm going to off myself. So I'm like, go ahead. I don't give a fuck. 
I literally I said that in a text and then she says that I'm bullying her and harassing her Yeah, so I got expelled my senior year because of that shit, but Alex and I are still together We're actually engaged and we have a four-year-old son. So suck it Melanie <laughs>